Hey guys, Dr. Chris here with another What's Happening Amiga video. What do we have this time? Today on the channel I spent way too much money, thanks to your help, and bought myself 1,475 capacitors. This is a roll of Nipidenzos and this is a pack of Panasonics. Got them off the old e-booger. They were a lot. That should last me a little bit. What do we have next on Amiga Repairs? Today on the Amiga channel we are going to be checking out an Amiga 1200 1D with an individual computer's uh, yep, VGA thing version like 1 or 2 and it also has this uh, ARM key, AMA key, A1200 USB plug-in style keyboard thing. It has a compact flash card with a short IDE header of unknown working order. We're also going to be removing the voltage sucking RF modulator from this unit. So stay tuned for that coming right now. Did you all notice I had my my Commodore uh, lab coat and my pseudo thing that's in that poster from the live stream? Here's a picture of that poster, by the way, so you can see this whole character thing with the helmet of Goober and my pseudo thing. It says words, words, words. It's kind of funny. I forgot my pen. Alright, so here we go again with these Rode mics that do not work well with me. You'll see I have it here. I don't know if this sounds good. I gotta have to set way down low because it's just too sensitive you can hear me swallow it's crazy it comes with this little butt plug thing i don't know it goes on here prevent wind noise i'm still learning this so my apologies in advance for the microphone but that way when i turn around you can still hear me we have an amiga 1200 1d as you can see it has a bunch of stuff on it we got the old uh compact flash style IDE there's also the iComp uh, whatever this is it has a bunch of tape over top of the uh, chip because this thing coming down on it would cause shortages and it just fell off um, we're going to be removing the rusty RF modulator because it does just suck up the current Amakey A1200 and it even says external USB. I guess you run a wire out. It has a reset line that's supposed to go in there. I don't know. Uh, it has 3.1 ROMs in here. MX branded. 1995. The board herself is, of course, 93, 94. Very dirty. Looks like it's uh, been sitting in a dust farm. Floppy connector and uh, power lead is still on there. Yet all bent. Um, we're going to be hooking up a drive to that uh, LEDs I don't have but let's uh, see what ha has a timing fix on the X uh, U2 U3s XC3 I just noticed something there's some hot glue or something on this socket yeah that means it's either been pulled up or something happened. So I'm going to be very careful with that. I have to remove it because there's a capacitor underneath it here that I have to get to. And what in the holy moly is this? Caps are original. Don't know if it works. Let's turn it on and find out. Uh, all PC converted floppy drives can't use a flip. They have to use a direct old wire. So I'm just going to plug this in and let it just kind of drape out the back. For the mouse, we're going to be using the camel toe. Now this does come with a DKB Cobra 40 MHz 68030 uh, with a 40 MHz clock. No FPU, no FPU crystal, and unknown RAM. It did have a battery in it, which I removed off camera. I'm not going to plug that in for default. Let me put on the prison bracelet and hit it. Nothing. Not a need, not a nothing. And you know why it's never going to work in the world? It will never, ever work. Why, Chris? 
that. The boom will come on if we get a TV signal, a TV signal, a video signal. Something's blinking on this thing right here, this Martian thing. It's blinking. All right, we get a nothing. Now, this does have the iComp thing, so I'm going to remove the DB23, and we're going to go directly into this thing. All right, so it's overriding the DB23. Or is it? Why is this all screwed up looking? That's weird. We're losing signal sync. So we have VGA and it's okay. It's really, really dirty and crusty on here. That explains why that Lisa chip was glued down because it's glued down. Um, I am really afraid to pull this thing off because I know what's going to happen. We're going to test the boot time without a floppy drive attached and a hard drive attached here. On again. AGA, Indivision AGA 24 bit. Okay. It's an older code, sir, but it checks out. You saw with a floppy, it booted right up. Without the floppy attached, it will take probably 20 or 30 seconds. All right, there we go, 3.1 ROM. So, turning it off, we know the unit works, at least as far as this iComp AGA 24 bit. Fire up the old solder station, 330 degrees Fahrenheit. Don't know if this works at all. I'm not even going to try it right now, nor am I going to try the Cobra because it has capacitors that need to be swapped out also. It does have a header on here to, like, something else would go on here, like SCSI maybe? I don't know these things. There's your accelerator, DKB Cobra. 40 megahertz uh, QFP CPU. The problem with this is the socket is glued yeah, I have to remove this with a screwdriver and do the twist method because I can't get this out. It's pulling the whole socket off with it. Okay, good. Whew. It's a reverse chip. All right. So there it is. If I needed to replace that, I actually could with another socket. It looks like it's been sanded down in one section here on the front. You can see that little nub right here. That is apparently to clear something that doesn't exist in this area in the front here. It's really sanded. I don't know if I'm going to show very well, but it's sanded down to the top of the copper. Here's that big red butt crack. We're going to do the usual. I'm going to give her a cleanup. Leaving the ROMs alone it has a clock port, which I have. I'm gonna throw in on this one. Uh, when I was looking in that AAA bundle a couple of videos ago, I found uh, my Amiga Kit uh, RTC with the smaller battery that I had uh, not used. So that'll go in here because it has a the 50% clock port. It's only been a 15 or so minutes. What do you know? After a dip in the old cleaning sauce here. Uh, that logo is silver. I thought it was gold. That's because it was just dirty with whatever. So the Cobra came out real clean. The bottom looks just incredibly great. I don't see it, any issues with this at all. The double scratch right here, scratch, scratch. I thought it was a, a crack in half, but nope, just machining. There's a line on the connector. I don't know if you can see that on the angle. There's one here and one here. Thought it was a crack. That looked like a crack. I guess this uh, DKB had some connectors that had that in it. So the fan noise you're hearing is just that. A fan drying off my excessive overspray of this clean okay. case. So it's a couple minutes later. A couple minutes, like a half hour. Yeah, I tried oil in this chair, by the way. I'm just fat, okay? Get over it. So as you can see, the damage is not too bad. These are just the caps removed and the aluminum cut gasket and plastic removed. This is not focusing well today. I hate you camera. I will save up and get another one. I still got to cut this one out, which I'll get to in a bit. RF modulator has been demodulated and everything is good so far. So I'm going to go ahead and wash this down, give her the old flux and wipe the legs off, get them clean. We'll stop back for 
that check and I'm not going to bore you with the recap or how to cut a cap off. If you are interested in how I remove caps, the Lorena Bobbitt style, that's her right here. Broke the spring, so I'm having a little bit tougher time. The spring keeps popping off and yeah, this is my clippers from my Ender 3 V2, but they're really good. They're sharp and they're angled perfect and they really get in there. So I know they're meant to cut 3D print stuff, but they work great. So Lorena Bobbitt, if you're interested, check out many of my previous videos where I show how to remove surface mount capacitors that way. It's really helpful and it's easier on you and you don't risk damaging the board. Sure, you can use hot air. You can use double-sided irons and some soy sauce or whatever. I don't know. That's This is what I use and it works and I don't lose pads, okay? That's what it's all about. If you got all the fancy stuff, go ahead and use it. Why don't you use hot air, Chris? Don't you have a hot air gun? Oh yeah, I have a couple of them. I had this one until I broke it and then I just cut the wire off. I actually have a separate station that's hot air. Um, the reason I don't use hot air on vintage computers, newer stuff, go for it. The lamination between the fiberglass layers of these dual and whatever sided boards can come loose under the, that type of heat. And you risk damaging other crap and Captain Tape and your mom and no, no. It's just easier to do this. It's just as fast and no fuss. You still got to go in here and braid them and clean them anyway. So that's where I'm at. I'm going to clean this up, get that cap off, and start putting new ones on. I'll come back after I clean this area up and just show you the cleanup. She's been cleaned, debraided, wiped again. I've kind of wiped all over the board, even though I sprayed it. It still just doesn't always get all the goodness. Um, over here, PCMCIA was all, whoops. PCMCIA, this cap had pooped all down in here, so I cleaned it out with a Q-tip. And as you can see on the table here, there's just a couple parts, and these Q-tips are really crusty. All of them double-ended because there's a lot of wiping going on. So much so that a couple episodes ago, this was 500 Q-tips. Now there's maybe 50 in there if I'm lucky, and I'll have to go get more. I'm still getting used to these stupid microphones that clip all over my shirt sideways and everything. So. Just like that, it is currently, I don't know what time it is, 5.31 p.m. And all 18 caps have been replaced. I do a red dot on top of mine with a red Sharpie, if you don't want it on there, I'll call it off, just so I can count the caps. And then I gotta test the floppy disk. I was told external floppies aren't working. So I retinned the uh, VCC line 12 volt, the two ferrite beads, and the uh, ceramic cap, which has been replaced, and the, uh, this change has been replaced. Okay, so I'm leaving this road thing sit on the dang desk for now. I took off the Indivision, individual computers, whatever this, is it an Indivision? I don't know what it is. And uh, yeah, took that off. So I'm gonna be running regular this. Turn the monitor on, the Davoom will come on just because it's getting power. My chair's squeaking. I'm sorry. I'm just a fat dude sitting in a plastic chair, all right? Nothing I can do about it. I did put oil in it. Everybody's like, oil your chair. Oil your chair because you put this oil on your camera and it worked. Put on your chair. I did. It's just some fat creaks. I'm sorry. You want to buy me a really kick butt chair? It won't squeak? Feel free. Otherwise, it's just gonna be some squeaking there's nothing I can do about it okay all right so 3.1 ROM another Amiga has been saved your mom okay we got this info we got the camel toe mouse now this is just stock Amiga I can't test the RAM with this because I don't know what I did with this I don't know so 68 ECO 20 your normal stuff okay kickstart 512k we got two megs of RAM and then nothing right that's great. I'm not worried about speed. I'm not worried about drives. I'm not worried about anything. Two megs of chip. Great. It's it's an Amiga 1200. It's this damn floppy. Hear it? That's the I'm trying to read three times and you suck. All right. Off on double mouse button. All right. 
boot options. CC0, which is the card slot. DF0, which is the internal floppy. So it works. I'm going to plug in the Cobra. No batteries, just the RAM and the Cobra. Turning it on, I'm going to double mouse button again and see if we uh, get anything. Holy crap. So after 10 or 15 minutes of checking all the pins and CPU connector, pull the RAM out and fired right up. So I don't know what this RAM is or if it's even any good. All right, I'm going to clean this off and put the RAM back in and see if it... Let's boot sysinfo. It's acting like there's no disk. So I have the RAM in, the DKB, and uh, without this thing, things seem to be better. All right, so we have memory. Come on. Four megabytes of RAM, two megs of chip. So that's cool. The DKB is working at least. And, uh, so there you go, four megs. And whoops, and two megs of chip, 32 bit, and it is now 60 to 30, no FPU, MMU on the chip. Let's get a speed base on it. We know the original one, but we always run this info. 6631 dry stand, 6.92 MIPS. It is one point or five times faster than a stock 1200. So that's a good bump in speed. Smell the rubber. I smell quesadillas upstairs. That's that's something. That's cool. You know what that means, guys? Another amiga has been saved. Yay. But are we done? No, no, no. We're not done. I'm going to turn this off. I got the prison bracelet getting ready to cut my circulation off. We're going to grab the old uh, GoTech here. Take the whole floppy drive out of the equation. Because this cable... Number one, it is, it's as dry as Joan Rivers' back. Let's take a peek at the old floppy drive. What we're going to do, now what we're going to do here is move this thing somewhere where it's not super loud. This thing is like putting the Vox meter all the way up there. Alright. Oh, God. Oh, God. Austin. We're going to go beep beeps. I'm going to goober down. I'm going to check on the 12 volt beep. Good. Good. I got 12 volt. That's making contact. Disc change. Shizzle. I got a busted ferrite bead. What is it with these ferrite beads, man? So to fix this, I'm running out of these kind of parts. We're injecting some Apple technology into this unit. This is an Xserve RAID, or no, an Xserve board with cobwebs, but it's got a lot of a lot of similar things I need, including little pull-ups, cobwebs, and uh, just stuff. And there's a couple diode packs and. The little things the Amiga uses, but most importantly, big ferrite beads that I can borrow. And little ferrite beads that I can borrow. Little tiny ones, too. So I want to measure some homage here on the ones that I can get to. And we're going to start pulling them off. I took something off this board a long time ago. I think a coil. This is 2000s technology. This is 90s tech. So Helmut Goober just got more intense. There's my guys I need in the back. I have four ferrite beads right here. See them? I'm going to tip my finger that I need to get off. And they just happen to be the exact same ferrite beads that I need for this freaking floppy drive. One wobble pop. Put it right over the board. So when you spill your beer, you get it all over everything. It's a cleaner. Just got thirsty. I'll put that way over here. Out with the old which is a little bit larger. So I'm working right here on this pad. I'm gonna put this little fair, uh, tiny thing that looks just like this tiny thing, which is supposed to be as big as this thing, in this spot. And how did my my piece get magnetized? One side, two side. Okay, now if I did that correctly, this will beep when I touch it and we'll be good to go. Yay. Yay. No. 1295. 
1556. It should be good. Corresponding one is 1566. Okay, so we're good. Now, if you're in a pinch, you could drag some solder, but I borrowed parts from an Apple computer board. Do I get power? We do. Bingo, chingo. Mega Test Kit 1.8. I like that one. There we go. External floppy is floppying. All right, so that's cool. I'm going to leave that in and turn this off. We're going to put the Cobra back in. External floppy Amiga test kit 1.8. I do have 2.0, but they changed their little disk test, test to, instead of track 0, track 40, track 79, they're doing like increments of 10, and it's weird. Please remember, I have no IDE. I have no hard drive, so it is looking for those things, which is causing the boot to be a little bit delayed. Get it going. Let her run till about four or five. I need to test this card. So we're on seven of one. I think that's good for this test. We're gonna test the four megs on this card. Now, this Cobra thing is actually kind of perfect because the SIM is in the front and it's auto configure. It'll tell you what RAM you got in there. If you don't mind waiting for this thing to boot, which is why I'm trying to get something in the Compact Flash DF0 range. So I want to take a moment to thank everyone who reached out to a brother and sent me all sorts of ROMs and other chip stuffs to assist with these repairs. And it's freaking awesome. And I thank you guys greatly. You know who you are. I'm not going to mention everything that was donated because it was just like a lot of stuff. ROMs and bits and things and like these battery dudes you saw in the previous videos and just things and uh 512k a501s with a battery thing cut out and then uh even a uh uh a501 rev 5 so the batteries were cut out so that's that's perfectly helpful for what i'm doing and it's it's incredibly appreciated just wants to let you know that so it's automatic according to its thing you put any size sim in up to 128 meg and it will detect it yeah and i'm gonna plug this guy in if df0 is not plugged in it will boot but it takes like 20 seconds when you're recording a video that's a pain in the butt that is the shortest little ide cable isn't it into these things and these have been nothing but problems okay so the unit as it arrived compact flash thingy icomp aga something Cobra with four megs and a working now Amiga recapped and an external floppy. I do not have the internal floppy hooked up, so we're going to have an extended boot delay. Here we go. Individual computers, Indivision AGA 24 bit is what it says. We got blinking on the Amici A1200 thing. And now we have four megs of fast. 6 megs total RAM, 2 chip, 4 fast. This mouse is crap. The audio with the music mod. We have strong audio out of that. Oh! Check these CIAs. This mouse is just so horrid. It's just horrid. Alright, we're good. I'm gonna just... the worst mouse on the planet I think I put this in Lance because he only, his ball was messed up a little better okay at least it moves now keyboard test that works RTC battery clock no clock detected all right so this thing has a clock on it but it's not clocking so what I'm going to do is because this board is in need of it, and I have it, I'm going to include this Amiga Kit clock. RTC, Amiga Kit 1200 RTC. It just plugs into the clock port right around the ROMs. Now we have an Amiga Kit 1200 RTC. Let's see what we get. Here we're booting, and then we're going to go RTC. There we go. Set the date and time. It is currently 7th of... August 2022 save and exit done all right what kind of clock was that a 6242 7242 was detected clock port 0000 it is 
Cool, huh? So this bad boy is decked out now. Check this sucker out. So we got the hard drive compact flash thing. We have the AGA 24-bit iComp DE thing. We have the the dim sum whatever this is, dim sum. That's a I'm hungry. Amaki A1200 uh, USB adapter. We got the VGA thingy bobber. Just put the Amiga Kit RTC on. We got the Cobra, DKB Cobra 030 with 4 megs of RAM. It can handle apparently up to 128. We have a fresh cap job and we repaired the external floppy because I'm booting off of it. Dealing with several other Amigas with those blown out floppy drives. Them ferrite beads just pop. That's because y'all are just yanking stuff out while it's running or plugging something in while the computer's on. Remember. It's 1994 when you're playing with these things. If you're going to do something, turn them off. Okay, so welcome back. I found a 32 megabyte card that I bought a long time ago. So I slid that bad boy in. We have nothing in the GoTech. We're just going to turn it on, see what we get. A little bit of a delay because of the no DF0. We do have a DF1. It might help. There's no lights on this thing. But this should boot. Now this card is a test card. Yeah, there we go. Works fine. Check it out. Workbench 2 on a 3.1 ROM. I like Workbench 2.1. 4 megs of RAM, 2 megs of chip. So we have Workbench running. This is Workbench 2. It's going to be pre-AGA. So my palette and prefs won't have the 256 color because it's Workbench 2. I think I'm going to keep a neutral Workbench 2 in case I have an in-between 1.3 or 3.1. They can both load Workbench 2. And I don't have many of these cards left. All right, so here we go. I put the floppy disk back in. Wow, that booted quick. That was quick. Parent, devs, parent, 512 meg card here. There we go. Boop, there's all my stuff. 2008, this card is from. Man, that boots quick. There we go. And with FAT95 installed, I can see the card normally. She boots instantly. The Amiga's been repaired. We have an external floppy. You saw the GoTech. We have the Cobra with the DKB030. Boom. 6,943 dry stones. 7.24 million instructions per second. No floating point. And uh, we say smell the rubber. MMU, we're rocking at 42.7 megahertz. That is an incredible leap of power for an Amiga 1200. This card will take up to 128 megs of RAM if you can find a 128 meg 72 pin SIM dual sided that still functions. So that is all I got for now. Thank you guys for coming along on this quick A1200 repair. It's nice to have an easy one now and then with only a couple things wrong with it and a fresh recap. So until next time, Thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something.